Welcome to Timbro Church's Faith University Christian Education Class. My name is Deacon Stewart, and I'm going to lead you to today's lesson, which is entitled, A High Calling, A High Calling. And the scripture lesson text comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1, and the lesson text comes from Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. However, I'm just going to talk about the first um, scripture in verse 1 for uh, my portion of this lesson. Um, let us continue, and we're going to start with a word of prayer. Um, we want to bless the Lord in our learning. Lord, we thank you, Father, and we honor you today. We give you the honor because you are so worthy, Lord Jesus. You are so worthy to us father so we just come to say thank you father we ask that you be with us as we go through this lesson father we ask that you touch and open our minds lord jesus on what you would like us to hear for today what we would like us to learn lord jesus we are a student of your word father and we thank you lord jesus for just having patience with us as we go through this lesson on today our lesson is coming out the book of Ephesians. Just a little background about the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is an encouragement to believers. It reminds us to stay true to the faith and resist the temptations in our lives. The epistle of Ephesians was written at a, written to the church at Ephesus, a coastal city in Asia Minor, which is now Turkey was the church was comprised of former Jews and Gentiles. The Apostle Paul writes to them to encourage them to stay unified within Christ. The main message of Ephesians is that believers in Christ are to reconcile not only to God, but to each other. They are to maintain unity within their families and the church while resisting the temptation to fall into sin. Verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of your vocation, wherewith ye are called. Chapter 2, with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing in love, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, which is above all and through all and in you all, but unto every one of us that has been given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended upon high, he led the captive captive and gave gifts unto men. And now that he is ascended, what is it but, and now that he is ascended, what is it but that he also descended first unto the lower parts of the earth? that he descended is all the same as ascended above, excuse me, ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fit all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in unity of the faith and of all knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure of every statue of the fullness of Christ, that there, that henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning and crafty, craftiness whereby they lie in wait to be deceived. 
but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joint together and impacted by what which what which every joint supplieth according to the effective working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself amen we want to thank the lord and timbrel church for putting on and giving us the opportunity just to learn this morning um giving us a platform where we can sit down and just go through the scriptures real slow. So I'm going to start off by reading the um, by reading the scripture lesson text um, to you in your hearing, and then we will go through what um, what I found that was um, that stood out to me the most. Um, as we read this morning from Ephesians chapter four again, the scripture reads, "I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord." Beseech you that ye walk worthy of your vocation, wherewith ye are called. Amen. And this lesson was about A.D. 60. The location was in Rome, and the writer of this text was Paul. Let us continue. Paul was under house arrest in Rome when he wrote this um, portion of the um, this letter. But he was still concerned about his loved ones. He was still concerned because he knew what we needed to hear. He viewed himself in prison as being in the Lord's will. He called himself the prisoner of the Lord. He felt what he was going through was because of the Lord. He felt that he needed to write this letter and writing this letter was service back to the Lord. This was his purpose. This was his ministry. This was his vocation. Paul uses strong words like receipt to get our attention. He felt that this was a very important subject here. He needed to get our attention and get it fully. The word beseech is defined as someone asking fervently, someone asking urgently. This was a urgent matter. This was a very important matter. Paul was begging for our attention. When we have something heavy going on, our, going on in our lives, the last thing we think about is someone else but Paul here is in prison and he is urging to get our attention about a subject that he felt that was very important when we're up against something like I said we don't focus on other people we don't focus on someone else we're focusing on how to get out of something we're focusing on how do we get into it or how can we not get into it again but here Paul is in prison and he's his concern is about his loved ones this was his vocation this was his purpose this was the reason why he was writing this letter the scripture reads there I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy what does it mean to walk worthy one translation means to live a life worthy. So your whole life, you're supposed to live it worthy or the portion that you're at, live it worthy. In the Greek, the word worthy speaks of living appropriately, living appropriately. So, so Paul here is begging us to walk appropriately or he's asking us to live appropriately living appropriately could mean different things to different people some people may feel living appropriately may be just doing the minimum some people may feel that living appropriately is just taking care of their responsibilities handling things that only fall in their circle 
not thinking about your neighbor or thinking about other people that is not really close to you. Or some people may feel living appropriately is going all out, going all out to the fullest at every aspect in their lives. But these are just a couple of things that living appropriately may mean to you or to someone else. There's many other things that living appropriately may be defined in somebody else's life. Paul here writes, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation. Walking worthy of your vocation. What does that mean? Walking worthy of vocation meaning like taking something to it. It takes us to another level because now he's added just not walk living appropriately, but we are walking appropriately for a reason. We're walking appropriately for of the vocation. Walking worthy of your vocation. The word vocation is defined in the dictionary as being an occupation with someone is especially drawn to or suited trained or qualified well we just look at this description of the word vocation drawn to we're all drawn to the lord we're all drawn to him and it's no coincidence because he's our creator this is no coincidence that we are been drawn to we're drawn to purpose we are suited for we have been suited for this because he is our creator. He created us and he created us with a purpose. So this is no coincidence that we're drawn to our creator or we're suited for. He ordered our steps and he knew us before we was born. He knew what we wanted us to do. And he knew that he, when he put the purpose in us, he gave us everything that we needed. Trained. Trained, we've been trained, we've been tested through life to make, we have been tested through life and we, the Lord has prepared us and every test that we go through, this increases our faith. It gives us strength to do what we have asked to do and we're qualified. We have been tested and qualified time and time again. We was created with a purpose. This test is just for our knowledge to give us strength and to make us grow. So the word occupation, really, when I look at that, it means work. It means like a job. So we know that there's going to be work included in this vocation. Just to let us understand it, the Lord has given us purpose. He's given us a job. So all of these words, even though it's coming from a regular dictionary, to describe vocation is a very important thing because it's describing and it's making us plain what is going on here. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation. Amen. Paul ends the scripture by saying, Ye are called. Ye are called. So we are to walk worthy of our vocation wherein we are called. Amen. We all been called for a higher calling. And this is why Paul is begging us from a place of imprisonment. And he's beseeching to us to walk worthy of our calling. We are to walk worthy of a higher calling. He's already called us by saying we need to walk worthy. But now it is higher calling. This is a higher calling that we should walk in it. So we ask ourselves, how do we do this? How do we walk worthy of our vocation that the, um, the challenge that has been put before us, the challenge that Paul is urging us to do? Well, we can find some of those answers in the second verse of chapter 4. Um, the second verse of chapter 4 reads, With all loneliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing 
in love, excuse me, forbearing one another in love. Which means basically just to be humble through your walk. Be humble and be honorable on what the Lord is calling us. So, um, in another translation, it means to be gentle. To be gentle. To be patient. Be patient. You're going to be patient with your patient with yourself first of all but you're also going to be patient with other believers as they walk in this together they are going through the same process so you know when you see your brother or your sister may need of help or they may be hurting this calls for you to be humble to be gentle and pray for them to lift them up because it's all for the glory of God this is this is your Submission. This is your deposit into the kingdom where a, your brother or your sister has another deposit, which is all for the good and the glory of the Lord. Amen. It reads on with long suffering. This is a long process. This is a long process. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen just because we made our mind that today now we are going to be worthy to walk in our vocation. So we know that this is a lifelong journey. It took us a long time to even get to this point. So now we must be gentle. We must be humble. We must have long suffering. It's going to take, it's going to be good points and bad points. It's going to be highs and lows. It's going to be celebrations and it's going to be times where we need to dig in and just to pray. Amen. Be forbearing in another, one another in love. Amen. Making allowances for, for the things that happen that we talked about, the highs and the lows. Making um, allowances because making allowances not only because we know it's going to happen but when we make these allowances it must come from a loving place just like Paul he's in his low spot and he was in prison but he was still concerned about his loved ones he was concerned about the things that he knew that we would encounter so all of this comes out of love all of this comes with being gentle and humble and all of these things and making allowances for your your partner or your neighbor and all of this doesn't just happen we have the help of the spirit of the lord in us which you can kind you can read this in um, verse three enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace so we are to keep the spirit and bond of peace this is an ongoing process this is an ongoing thing this is this walking in our vocation is a precious and patient thing that we must have and these are the things that i you know in me at my level right now where i'm at in life and how i perceived what i read here I know that there's much more to this and I just hope that I, you know, what I pulled out and what was pulled out in this lesson today can help one another, can help us be in our walk, make us walk worthy, make us give full justice into what God has asked us to do at whatever level we're at, that we strive to do more, we strive to keep and we're meek and we're, mung, and we're honored and we're humble while we're doing these things. In today's lesson, we see that God has given us a purpose. He has given us a calling, a higher calling. And we have the Apostle Paul here begging and urging us to walk worthy of it so that we can be victorious. So we, when our deposit is made into the kingdom, that it is an appropriate, we've lived our lives appropriately. And the other, this another, here's another point that came out to me during this lesson that it is not a burden. Paul wasn't burdened with his own problems when he thought about us while writing these epistles, but it is a blessing of the Lord which that we have by following what he has set forth for us. I mean, it's going to be hard and it's going to be tough, 
but it, it's not a blessing. It just turns into, it's not a burden, excuse me, but it turns into a blessing. Being one with Christ is a common purpose and goal for all believers. And it's all for the glory of God. So we have to really, we really look at this. We are being blessed in each and every way because it's with God's grace that we can do it anyway. And it's all because of him that we can do it. It is nothing that we can do to earn what he gives us. He laid out this plan for us to be victorious. And it is the gifts of grace that we have when we come one another with one come into one mind but what he has for us is is wonderful thing we're blessed people for it we thank him for what he's done and how he has blessed us with his spiritual gifts and if we will walk in our worthy of our worthy of our calling we would definitely, we're the beneficiaries of it. This lesson was very powerful in showing us that what we, we are already trained to do, we are already qualified to do what God is asking us to do. And when we're drawn into what we're doing, it's not a coincidence. So we just, we just continue to do what we can do, but we continue to do it at a higher level, thinking outside of our box, thinking outside of our circle. We are called to a higher calling. We honor the Lord. So we're going to close this lesson out in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for the lesson, Lord Jesus. We thank you for opening up our eyes. We thank you, Father, for urging us to do greater than, greater than, because we are called under your name. We are called at a higher calling. We are called, Father, to do great things. We are called to walk worthy of our vocation. We honor you today and we praise you in your holy name. Amen.